Hey, hello everyone, this is Airmax, and today is day 8 of the Intel Arc Challenge. Yes, you heard it well. This is our last day on this little baby. For the first and last video about the challenge, I decided to run this one on Linux. You know, the real question is like, do you think we're gonna even be able to run it in a desktop environment? Where are we gonna be able to like you know like play video games uh, on Linux with this uh, little beast here? Or maybe if we are able to run it, can we tweak it to get better like FPS or even like smoother experience than on Windows? Well, that's the question I'm gonna try to answer in this video. So before we jump into it, uh, I wanted to give a big shout out to Linux from Linux Tech Tips who kind of like inspired me to make this video. Dude, it has, been, it has been pretty fun so far. We had a lot of like negative and positive out of this experience. And I really hope that, you know, like this Linux experience is going to be uh, something interesting too. If you want to see what happened before, I invite you to watch the two other videos. One was like on just installing the card inside my PC. And the second one was to run it on Windows. If you don't want to get any spoiler, I really invite you like, to stop this video and go watch the two previous ones and then like, go through this one. As a reminder, the way I covered the, the previous uh, video was uh, running like this card as a daily driver in my main PC. And what I do on a daily basis is I play video games, I record uh, this type of video or some of my gameplay, and then I edit them and push them to YouTube. I run normally like Linux. I use uh, Endeavor OS, uh, Linux distribution based on Arch. I, I recommend it, by the way, like really good, really good distribution for, I would say, like uh, as a newbie uh, to the like the super experienced uh, Linux user. And I use that with a 1390 NVIDIA card. Yeah. So switching from a 1390 to, to this was definitely something. For this element, I totally bypass the recording and editing part uh, using the Intel Arc on Linux uh, for a simple reason. To date, loading the correct Intel like firmware on Linux has been a real hassle. And even if you load it before like or during the boot, you might have still like get a lot of problem using FFmpeg with a new API that Intel want to switch to. So I don't want to go too deep into that. I made a full video seven weeks ago on how like much I struggle to make it work on Linux at the time. And I didn't want to go into like this experience video, like trying to troubleshoot like the whole thing for like 20 hours. So again, like in case you missed it, I'm, I'm going to put a link here and yeah, you can go through the video and get the full experience. I might get another video when everything is fixed, but I don't think it is the case right now. So no editing and no encoding like test on Linux. Not happening. What we're going to be focusing on will be really like the process of installing Linux with this card. Like, does, does it even work? What, what type of experience are you going to have if you install like a distribution on this? I would say like if it works, like how much can you use this card in your desktop environment? And what would be the extent? Like, how much can you get out of it? That's going to be really the, the focus on this video. So obviously, because Endeavor OS is my main distrib at the time, um, I went again for it. I downloaded the ISO, burned it, and proceeded to install. Well, guess what? It didn't work. I could not even load the installer, like the graphic environment to get to the install. So, yep, yeah. that's it, that's all, guys. This is the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and obviously, like, big up to all the YouTube members who support the video creation and also all the Patreon members who help me financially to get this type of card. Um, again, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. See you in another one. Bisous, bisous. Okay, you really thought I would give up that fast? Now, Meo, wh what do you think this is? We don't give up on this channel. We never give up. So, what did I do? This is a challenge. 
we'll go through it. So I burned the latest Arch ISO and install the OS. Boom, like that. Here we are running Arch on an Intel Arc A380. So what happened earlier? Well, it looks like we need to have an ISO with the latest version of the driver kernel, a kind of an up-to-date um, kind of ISO to be able to launch a graphical environment. And because an install like Endeavor OS is based on a live environment, if you can boot on a live environment, well, you won't be able to install. You're going to need like some type of like ISO, which is like enough up-to-date to load this graphical environment, or you're going to need an ISO uh, like the Arch ISO, which doesn't even have a graphical environment. It's just, you know, like the old like good terminal type of approach. And it worked. There is a thing. It went pretty smooth. Like really, really smooth, guys. Like what the actual f Is this real? I had so many issues trying to install it in my Linux server. And now I just install Arch and it worked right off the bat. I boot in my desktop environment. Like, listen, the experience of installing like this card was actually super smooth. It was better than Windows. I just plug in it there, press install, go through all the, you know, like different like steps from, from Arc install, boot, and boom, you are, you are in. My card was recognized right off the bat, 270 hertz on my screen, and uh, yeah, pretty, pretty simple. I did like install Steam, download some game, Apex and CSGO to compare like what was the experience, to, to be clear. And I played and I played the game and I was actually pretty amazed. Like, look at this score in Apex Legend. This was my first game. I just owned everyone with a small card like that. But before going into the result, you are certainly asking yourself, like, why are we not watching the game right now? Why are we not watching, like, what was actually going on on your PC? Well, <laughs> Intel drivers are still not ready for both Windows and Linux. No jealous here. The resolution of my capture card was not properly discovered uh, through the OS. And I, I believe it's a driver issue. I could not just capture the footage. There is no way I would have been able to capture any footage, which is kind of a mess, but that's what it is. So because I was not able to do that, uh, I had to find like some type of alternative, right? So I tried to use OBS and capture the, the you know, like the screen itself within the uh, desktop environment. Well, also, it was not possible because there is some type of like driver issue which creates a rendering lag when you try to capture anything on your desktop with this card. So I, I do believe it's a driver issue. Maybe it's an OBS issue on Linux. Like there is so many variables. I still think this product is pretty early, but I, I still wanted uh, to show you wh what's happening, right? So here is the footage. <laughs> Don't be upset, but that's the uh, best quality I could have there. But I wanted to make a point. I wanted to show you it still worked, right? This is me gaming uh, without any tinkering. I just installed the OS, installed Steam, and run the game via Proton Experimental. So some important points to, to note. The first start of Apex, shaders were compiled right before the game start. So with this card, you have no issue right off the bat with any stutter related to the compilation of shader. It's just done before the game starts. That's good. At the same resolution, uh, FPS look not as good as on Windows, however. Like I would say, like you're going to take like a 10% hit, but it's still a better experience than what we had on Windows because I don't know if you remember, but on my last video, um, when we run the game on Windows, we had Spike at like 140 FPS and it was supposed to be great. But truth is like, I couldn't play the game. It was unplayable. This one, I would say you will be around like, if, if you stay in 1414p, you're going to be around 60 to allez, 80 FPS max. But it's going to be smooth. Like it's going to work. You're going to have a really smooth experience. 
cherish on the cake. If you install something like Proton G or you compile yourself like the uh, latest like uh, Proton based on Wine Experimental or Proton Experimental, whatever you, however you want to do it, you're going to be able to use FSR. And with FSR, the experience was golden. Really good. Like, I, 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 I owned everyone. So I was pretty happy about it. And again, like to give you an idea of the number, you will get around like 90 to, I would say like 140, sometimes 150 FPS. But an average around like a solid, I would say a solid 100 FPS if you, if you use FSR. You're going to lose, obviously, like a little bit of like quality on screen. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. Apex Legends, great experience. Now, now move to CSGO. And CSGO was also like a great experience too. The game run native. You had to start it with a Vulcan option. So obviously when you're going to start the game for the first time, you're going to have a little bit of stutter. But the game run pretty well. And I was fairly impressed by the performance of the card. I would say the performance was on par with Windows on this one. Really, really, really good. Uh, I played some deathmatch. So at this point, I felt like I didn't need to test any more game because it kind of gives you like a good like vision on what your experience will be on on linux because you go through vulcan i'm pretty sure like most of the game will be working great on linux with this card it's open driver you might have some you know like issue there and and there but from my experience so far like on those games i could say like the compatibility for playing games, even if the performance was a little bit under on certain games, that the compatibility will be better on Linux than on Windows at this stage. So what is really interesting to see with uh, the launch of this card is that the driver development is almost at the same stage on Windows and Linux. I, I, you know, I would have think that the Windows version will be like kind of like privileged, but I have to admit at this point in time, there is no big difference between the two OS, you know, Obviously, on Linux, you won't have the bell and whistle that you got on Windows. You know, not any of those like nice little overlay and the ability to tweak the card in depth yet. But on the other hand, you don't have to install anything. It works right off the box, right? You don't have to download nothing. And that's, that's pretty good. Even if the driver are still in development stage, I was thinking like, what if, like, what, what is, what type of future the development of the driver reserved us. When I was recording the, the Windows version, uh, Intel announced that they, they were increasing by 80% the performance of their driver with uh, CSGO, which was pretty insane. It's, from my understanding, uh, with the release of the kernel 6.2, everything will be loaded right off the bat. You won't have to install anything. You just install the kernel. You will have the right firmware. You will have the right driver. It will be fully supported, which also means that on paper, I should be able to transcode everything I want soon. So, yep, pretty happy about that. Sorry for the quality of, of the edit and the footage, uh, but, this, but this whole challenge, when I think about it, was totally absurd. I'm, I'm using my 1390 on a daily basis. And I'm pushing it to the limit. So me switching to a in-development driver on a new like architecture with a card which is like 10 times or 20, mm, yeah, 10 times, 15 times less expensive than the card I use. So obviously like way less powerful than the card I use was a pretty rough experience. I want to be honest with you, but the truth is like, you know, I was still able to edit like 4K footage on a 140 US dollar card. And, you know, like it's, it's pretty inc incredible from my perspective. Even if this card is not the best of all by far, uh, I think Intel, what Intel was able to do is pretty impressive. This is their first GPU after all. And I believe the timing of launch of this card is unfortunate, even if the pricing is super solid on paper. With the launch of the 7900 series for AMD, I believe like all the mid-range GPU are going to like take a dip in terms of pricing. And the value of the Intel card might take a hit while being compared, you know, with the second hand like graphic cards which are on the market right now. 
However, uh, I believe that Intel engineers are doing a great job pushing a driver update almost every three weeks. And at this rhythm, they will certainly like improve the user experience and the performance of those cards way faster than expected. So if you are in the market for one of those, don't avoid them totally. Like, don't make this mistake. Um, they might be like good old French wine, getting better as they age, and you might miss a really good opportunity to save money on your next build. I will post a sponsor link below just to make sure like if you get one of those, like please use this link, it really helps the channel. Guys, overall, I hope you enjoy uh, this little series of videos on the Intel Arc Challenge. Uh, if you want to see more, I need your support to get more hardware and create more content like this. Um, I'm buying everything out of my pocket. So guys, like if you really like this type of video, like don't hesitate to, to help me. It would be great for the future of this channel. Uh, if you like this video also, like please subscribe, giving a thumbs up. Again, I want to thank all the members of the YouTube membership and also all my Patreon will make it happen. Guys, thank you very much. See you in the next one. And until then, take care. Bisous, bisous.